How's that Love it. Here? With that as an introduction, I want to welcome you all to the Friday free-for-all edition of the Nightly Nuge. I was going to ask how you're doing, Ted, but I see you're doing fabulous. I'm doing really well. I got a Gibson Birdland, I got an attitude, I got a spirit, and I got a guitar pick, and I got some fire fingers. I love my Gibson Burglar. What a piece of Americana handcrafting beauty right there. Huh? Look at that, Keith. That's impressive. Well, hey, listen, I do want to talk about your new album. I want to talk about uh, the event you got coming up down in Panama City the end of uh, next month. I want to talk about some of our friends that are going out on tour. Um, but before we get there, I want to talk about something sad in the news and get your opinion on this. You know, Taylor Hawkins, 50-year-old drummer for the Foo Fighters, passed away. And, I, I, you know, obviously everything is speculative right now. There was a preliminary toxicology report that came out, had 10 different substances. I also saw some people talking about maybe it was the vaccine because he complained of chest pains before, you know. So without casting any judgment on that particular tragic uh, event, I really want to focus more on what is it about famous people living the, the dream that the rest of us mere mortals do, like yourself, a rock star, whether you're a famous comedian like uh, John Belushi or actors like, uh, you, you know, we could just there's a long list uh, uh, seem to have problems with drug and alcohol abuse. And and what is it about that lifestyle that leads to that, Ted? And and what was it about your upbringing that allowed you to avoid it? Well, I lost my brother, John, a couple of years ago, just a great, great American rock solid in the asset column, a great brother, a great husband, a great father, a funny guy, a, a natural marksman, the work ethic of Thor. And when my brother, John, died, this, this emotional guitar pulse happened. And I'll play it for Taylor Hawkins and everybody who misses this great, fun, incredibly gifted young man. heartbreaking on so many levels, 50 years old with a, a, a horrible long-term celebration of substance abuse. And again, I'm not, well, I am casting judgment because substance abuse is selfish. His wife and daughter, they should have been taken into consideration. Is spending time with your wife and daughter more important than getting high or less important than getting high. I've told the story many times, but I've witnessed it. My, my bass player, Greg Arema, so gifted at, at 15, listened to the bass part on Journey to the Center of the Mind by the Amboy Dukes. And the guy was just um, gifted a, a virtuoso, a, a savant of groove and, and musicality. And he started smoking dope and ended up with heroin mm. and died when he was... I don't know, early 20s and the future he could add. I told Jimi Hendrix, I said, no, I don't want your dope. And it's going to kill you, Jimmy. Bon Scott would come to the studio when my band was recording Weekend Warriors down in Miami. And ACDC was coming in Highway to Hell. Just phenomenal musical powers. And he'd come in drunk every day with a Jack Daniels or an old granddad. And he'd go, oh, I'm you, you got to try some of this. And he smelled like a diaper and he and he was a what a talent, what a nice guy. These were all nice guys. But what happens is the music can be so overwhelming 
the delivery of your comedy or your art or your 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 dream it can be so obsessive that it's hard to get rid of it you know how when just a guy that doesn't make music sometimes it's hard to get a song out of your head well think of how difficult it is for those of us that make the art mm. And if they don't have a bow and arrow, and a lot of people will dismiss this as being just absolutely too simple, but it's not, it's, it's, it's perfectly simple. If you are so obsessed with delivering your art that you can't escape it, they think drugs and alcohol will help. It only makes it worse. So if you loved Taylor Hawkins, I loved him. I love the man. I still love him. But I love his wife and daughter more because they didn't break his heart. He broke their heart. So God rest Taylor Hawkins soul and all those stoners and drunks that died prematurely. Thank God for every day you're above ground, breathe deep, concentrate in the positive and show reverence for your gift of life and your sacred temple. Do not poison your sacred temple. It's that simple ladies and gentlemen words of wisdom from a rock star himself ted nugent come back tomorrow we'll have a weekend edition of the nightly nuge <laughs>